recently, we thought a good addition to our historical episodes would be to highlight the various executive heads of the Pennsylvania state, the governors. There are presidents of the United States of America under the Constitution, the first of which being George Washington, but there were also prior to 1781 the 14 presidents under the Articles of Confederacy. So too, in the early days of Pennsylvania, the first constitution in 1776 created the Supreme Executive Council with a president of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania at its head. This system lasted from September 1776 until December 1790, and during that time, seven people served as president of Pennsylvania. So, this is actually going to be the first in a short series, a seven-part series, profiling these pre-governors, the presidents of Pennsylvania. And our first episode in this brief series is going to be on Thomas Wharton Jr. At the time of his birth in 1735, Pennsylvania was still known as the province of Pennsylvania. Thomas Wharton Jr.'s paternal grandfather had immigrated from England to the province in the early 1680s. Prominent Quakers, his father served as the Chester County Coroner for a good time. In 1761, he would become a member of the Philosophical Society, a group created by Benjamin Franklin in 1743 for the stated purpose of promoting useful knowledge. Within a year, Thomas Wharton Jr. would marry for the first time. His marriage to Susanna Lloyd would be something of a scandal as their marriage was presided over by an Anglican clergy. This event, his marriage, marked his separation from the Society of Friends, so there is no information confirming that Wharton converted to the Anglican Church. Prior to the American Revolution, Thomas Wharton had established himself as a merchant, though I cannot readily find much information as to the details of his business. It appears, though, that he was doing well and had garnered some respect within the community, and he had a stone farmhouse in Montgomery County known as Twickenham, and it would stand until most of the original structure was torn down in the 1950s. Thomas's brother, Jonathan, was involved in shipbuilding and even built two ships, the Experiment and the Washington, for the colony's naval force. Thomas Wharton Jr.'s wife, Susanna, would die in 1772. By that time, the two had five children. Not long after, Wharton married Elizabeth Fishbourne. The two of them would have three more children. This time would correspond with his increased actions among Philadelphia's merchants who would play a prominent role in edging towards the revolution. Though he had signed petitions against different acts in years past, he would become more involved politically following the Boston Port Act of 1774, which closed the Boston Port as a response against the infamous Boston Tea Party. Wharton was likely fearing similar punishments would fall upon Philadelphia. He engaged himself in the conversation and would become a member of various committees, including the Committee of Safety, which was effectively Pennsylvania's governing body in the early days of the Revolution and was a secret government of sorts as it operated outside of and without the knowledge of the royal governor. By the end of July 1776, Thomas Wharton Jr. would become the first president of the Committee for Safety. This committee would draft the Commonwealth's first constitution. That constitution would create an executive committee with a representative from each of Pennsylvania's then 12 counties. This committee would elect a president, but there doesn't appear to have been any set term for that office. Despite objections to this organization by figures such as Robert Morris, who saw it as radically democratic, Wharton would be elected as the first president of the Supreme Executive Council. 
Wharton would serve as the first president of Pennsylvania from March 5, 1777 until May 23, 1778. Wharton died in office while the Executive Council was in exile in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia having been overrun by British troops. He was in his early 40s. He was given full military honors as his position made him the commander-in-chief of Pennsylvania's forces, and he is buried within the floor of the historic Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Lancaster. He was not a Lutheran and seems to have been largely without religion, but the church had offered to take his remains. Also buried within Trinity Lutheran Church is Thomas Mifflin, who was both the last president of Pennsylvania and the first governor. As such, we will get to Mifflin soon enough. From what I've read, some historians speculate that because of Thomas Wharton's early death, again, he was in his early 40s, his date of birth has been lost to history, he's probably largely forgotten because of that. Had he lived further, he may be more regarded or at least more widely known as a pivotal figure, if not just in Pennsylvania and certainly in Philadelphia, but in the emergent America. Outside the Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Lancaster on Duke Street is a historical marker. It reads, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Founded in 1730, a session for an Indian treaty was held in the original church building in 1762. The present edifice was dedicated in 1766. Here are interred the remains of Thomas Wharton, 1778, and Governor Thomas Mifflin, 1800. A final note, two final notes. One, Twickenham is an exceptionally fun word to say. I'm not positive I'm saying it with enough twang and tweed, but boy, what a great name. Two, as soon as I started reading, I noticed I really picked up on that name, Wharton. Does it have anything to do with the school in Philadelphia? So far as I can say, no. It's just a complete coincidence. But there is the first president of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Thomas Wharton, Jr.